It's alive! It's alive! 10 a.m. at UTC plus two, and Paradox have pushed the 3.0.3 patch live. It was in the beta, now it's live. I didn't see any announcement that it was going to happen. I don't know if you did, but this took me completely by surprise. Let's dive into the patch notes and see which changes from the beta have stuck around to the live version. Version 3.0.3. First, the balance changes. Well, they have increased the minimum growth on our planet, so no longer will it just be 1%, but uh, it'll be 10% from the logistic growth at the very top. That means that when you fill up your planets, when they get to capacity, you'll still be getting a tiny amount of growth on them, whereas before you got basically nothing. So that's, that's something. They've also reduced the effect of uh, the Empire Pops on required growth of new Pops to 0.25 from 0.5. So they've halved the ceiling you need to reach to get a new pop to spawn. That's that's very interesting. I mean, that's something I think people have definitely been complaining about. So I think that's gonna be a welcome change. Now, they've also reduced the number of pops you need to upgrade your capital buildings. That's now going to be 10, 25, and 50 from 10, 40, and 80. I mean, these are changes we saw in the beta and they've, they've kept them, they've put them through. Uh, the Hive Worlds uh, now also provide plus one spawning drone job, that's cool. The Machine Worlds also provide an extra replicator job. So slave processing plants will enable automatic resettlement for slaves on their planet, but they're going to reduce the rate at which they're done. You can offset this apparently with trade, transit hubs and other modifiers, but that's uh, that's interesting. That, that means that now you've got an option for trying to get slaves to move around your planets. However, this isn't going to help you with Thrall Worlds, if you really like Thrall Worlds, because you don't get unemployed slaves on Thrall Worlds because they work in the toiler job. So, so that really, I don't see how that's going to help there. Uh, they've doubled up the duration of Prosperous Unification Planet Modifier to 20 years. That's very cool. Before it was just 10, so it's cool to see that they've They've added that in. Criminal Syndicate Civics now also grants an extra code breaking uh, in addition to the fact they replaced the plus 10 infiltration on Ruthless Competition and Shadow Council with another plus one code breaking. So that's really important for criminal syndicates though as with a criminal syndicate you can't get commercial pacts so in order to get your, uh, your branch offices down on planets you do have to be uh, using intel to, to find their planets after you've contacted that alien so so that's helpful for criminal criminal syndicates now they've, they've given a bit of a nerf to the galactic defense force here ships used to cost uh 50 they used to have a 50 percent reduction to their cost in terms of alloys now that's only 25 percent but when you expand the gdf it's going to go up to 35 so an extra 10 percent i mean i think that if a player is playing as the crisis in some sort of multiplayer engagement that's going to be quite a challenge for the galactic community now now that their gdf ships are even more expensive but um but overall i, I can see how the gdf was very very powerful and it's it's probably a, a good thing to have reduced the the cost of those ships and they've made it so you can no longer permanently lose your etherophasic engine however if you lose control of it you're going to wipe out all progress you had made upgrading it so that's that's something uh, they slowed down purging by 50% because there are so many fewer pops now in the game But they've increased the speed of neutering from uh, 500 months per pop down to 10. So that's cool What else have they done? So they've also every time you purge a pop with forced labor processing or chemical processing You're gonna get four months worth of uh, output from that. That's very cool They've also made uh, ion cannons, perdition beams, and titan lasers uh, energy weapons. So you're going to benefit from the repeatables there. I mean, I didn't actually know that you weren't benefiting from those. I thought they already were classified such, but that's that's cool. Uh, reduced criminal job effect from minus ten uh, to minus five from minus ten. Okay, well that's that's a bit of a nerf to uh, to criminals, but overall I suppose that's to just otherwise crime was completely smashing the planet trade value through the floor. So this is. This is to kind of offset that a bit. Now, bio trophies used to provide two unity, they're dropping that to one. But on the other hand, a bio trophy, instead of providing plus 0.25% output to complex drones, it's plus 1%. So I don't know, you might've seen I did a, a build on a rogue server to ring world being the most overpowered build at the moment. 
I'll leave a link to that in the description, but that's going to actually have increased the uh, terrifying research capacity of that empire, which is, uh, yeah, that's quite scary. Um, well, that's, I mean, I like road servitors. I'm not sure they needed a buff, but, but fair enough. They've also made terminal egress a black hole. I mean, I've actually done this. So I uh, was playing as the Crisis and the Nanites spawned and I wanted to stop them destroying the galaxy. And of course, as the Crisis, I was kind of role playing as the Galactic Custodian. So I sent in a Star Eater and uh, exploded terminal egress, egress, which shut down the Elgate network and saved the galaxy from the Nanite hordes. But, uh, but they've stopped that now, so you can't do that, which uh, I suppose that's very important because people were moving their capitals to the Elgate cluster as the crisis, and then they were blowing up the uh, the terminal egress, which meant that no one could reach them, no one could get to them. So, so that's quite good. Medical workers have received a buff. Now they're going to increase organic pop assembly by 5%. That's cool. And they're going to increase habitability by 2.5%. I mean... So at four jobs, you're going to be looking at 20% organic pop assembly increase, as well as a 20% biopop increase, as well as a habitability increase of 10%. I mean, that might be worth it now, you know, possibly. I mean, let's let's look at the maths, let's get back, and let's see if that is, is going to be worth it over the opportunity cost of having those uh, workers employed in different jobs. Or those specialists even so uh, but, but but that's that's a step definitely in the right direction to making medical workers uh, more useful and more um, reliable or more relevant even for for players pops will no longer resettle away automatically from newly founded colonies until five years have passed this means that habitats will no longer have one worker flee before you can give them something to do that's really useful i mean i i know that i was playing uh, i did some voidborn uh, runs and it was a pain in the ass. You, you create a new habitat, you get two pops on there because you've taken expansion, and then suddenly that second pop has run away um, before before you can do anything. The gather information operation now also grants plus five maximum infiltration level for 10 years, stacking with itself up to plus 20. Continuing to perform the operation will reset the 10 year timer if it's at plus 20 maximum level operation, in the maximum infiltration level. Well, that's. That's really cool, actually, because before you do the um, you do gather intel and you'd only go up by five intel, but then you'd be knocked back infiltration away, and you wouldn't be able to get your infiltration level up to the intel, so the intel would keep degrading. But this is going to mean you can do gather information to to boost your infiltration and keep keep the intel that you're trying to get. I mean that that's very useful. They've made menace rewards scale with the number of empires in the game. Now that's. That's going to be interesting. I want to see exactly the balance they've done there, uh, but that's but that's going to be a, a cool change to to the Crisis Ascension perk because um, at the moment it's very overpowered in multiplayer situations. But maybe if there are fewer empires, it's going to be reducing the the benefit from that these cri that the Crisis is getting. So that's that's definitely could be a good thing. They've reduced the number of clerk jobs by buildings districts by forty percent. Clerk trade value has been increased to four. I mean, yep, I covered this already in a previous beta video, but uh, that's definitely going to make clerks more useful. They're not they're not strictly going to be better at producing energy than a technician, absolutely not. But this doubling of trade value is going to be really helpful for builds that rely on clerks and trade value. I mean, I know people do like playing megacorps with with trade value, and and it's been kind of painful only having this two trade value that you've had to stack all these bonuses into. But now, now it's now it's a bit better. Whether that whether that makes it, it's definitely not making it better than a technician job. But whether that makes it kind of a stack up when you've got say the the specific trade policy like the trade league in, maybe. But um, we'll have to see. Crime Lord deal now also adds criminal jobs. Well, that's good. They finally given a negative penalty to Crime Lord. But if you uh, set one worker class job and one um, one specialist job to be uh, to, to be a priority, those crime jobs, as far as I know, don't fill up. So unless they fix that, it's not really a nerf because you can get around it. You can stop your pops moving into those jobs so they're going in the right direction with this i think but it's, it's not quite there yet the manufacturing focus buildings factories and foundries they're no longer exclusive we, we've seen this in the beta already that's cool and they no longer add jobs to industrial districts instead they're going to increase your base production of alloys or consumer goods i mean i think that's really good that means on your uh your ecumenopolis worlds where you've got all these alloy foundries those alloy workers are now going to be getting a base increase 
which when you stack that with all the bonuses you're going to be getting to those jobs, especially in the mid to late game, you're going to be able to produce a phenomenal amount of alloys with not without having a completely full planet. So that's that's really cool. And they've done the same thing for the re basic resource production um, buildings. So that is the, the, the energy grids, min mineral purification plants and the food one. They're going to be adding plus one and plus two jobs. And they've reduced the base automatic resettlement chance to 5% per month. Uh, I think before it was 7% or something like that. I, I can't remember the, off the top of my head. But, but this is definitely um, this definitely means that something like democracy and the transit hub are actually important now. Because before you didn't really need them. You you were getting a good chance of getting automatic, automatic resettlement without doing anything. So this is definitely useful. Now a big one here. They've reduced the list, logistic growth ceiling from 2 to 1.5. What does that mean? Well, that means that biological empires have received a nerf because your your machine empires, and to some extent hives, because they do have um, they do have the the production, you know, the the uh, the pop assembly buildings uh, at the beginning, the spawning pools at the beginning of the game. But but uh, but machine empires, their growth hasn't been reduced. Our growth has been reduced by a factor of 1.5. That means we're losing at our maximum ceiling as a biological empire 1.5 growth per month, which is a lot. That's uh, that's 25% knockdown before we're applying bonuses. That means before we're comfortably able to get, for instance, on Incumenopolis up to 12 pop growth per month, now we, you know we're going to be getting up to eight or nine and be kind of stuck there. I mean, yeah, there are ways of getting even higher if you go down the biological ascension path, etc. But but I definitely see that reduction in logistic pop growth as as a nerf to biological empires where where we really didn't need one. I mean, machines at the moment, machine uh, machine world with a machine empire is very much in the meta, the multiplayer meta at the moment. And, and this just gives more reason to not play a biological empire if you're really trying to, um, trying to win a competitive multiplayer game, uh, which, which I think is sad. I think it's always good to have many options and you know, try and have lo uh, lots of builds that, that can work. And they've they're kind of pushed away from that here a little bit. But they have added sliders for these things. So both the logistic growth cap and the empire-wide growth now have sliders. You can move from 1.5 up to 2. Uh, of course, they've said they're going to have. This is going to have uh, significant effects on game balance and performance. Right. Well, we we kind of knew that already, and uh, you know that's why they brought these things in. I wonder if playing on Iron Man mode, you have to set these things to their base values. But uh, but we'll have to see. What else has happened? Performance and stability. Well, they've optimized spawning the L gates to not freeze the game. That's cool. Uh, fixed crash to desktop. Optimize some yearly tick cool 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 uh, a ui changes so necrophage chamber of elevation description now explains why the jobs provided by that building may vary that's cool they've added a tooltip in diplomacy view for civics when you do not have sufficient intel to see them that's good at the moment it was just a question mark and it's like well why can't i see them is the game broken what is going on they added uh, assign an unassigned tooltip to espionage asset and create espionage operation view that's good added right click to unassign espionage asset Cool. Uh, best species for a habitable planet is now shown in the galaxy view tooltip and not only in the system view. Well, that's really useful, actually. Before, it's you hovered over, you saw the habitability, but it didn't necessarily tell you which species to go that was for. Now it's added that in. That's that's nice. That's a helpful quality of life update. They've added tooltips and hidden disabled some UI elements to show that an occupied ship that show that an occupied shipyard cannot be used. Good, good. Uh, that's that's helpful. They've added some AI changes, uh, right? So they fixed the Lithoid Tree of Life AI, who which never ever not ever colonizing or using the decision to transplant the Tree of Life to conquer plants. Well, that's a bit stupid. I'm glad they did that. They fixed the AI reserving food for planetary decisions, even though no decisions require food. Ah, okay. So before, in an old version of the game, you could. Um, there was a 1,000 1, food decision to increase growth in your planet. The AI must have been accounting for that, but not able to do it, just was holding on to food. Now it's not. That's good. That might also fix the fact that in, in diplomacy, the AI loves food. Maybe the AI was uh, waiting so much towards food because it was trying to save up to this uh, 1,000 food surplus per planet. So if an AI had, say, five planets, it wanted to have 5,000 foods saved up for these planetary decisions. And if it didn't, it was 
desperately trying to get them. So, so possibly that's a balance fix for diplomacy, but we'll have to see. AI now cares more about energy and alloys, adding a building limit defined. Well, that's very cool. AI now waits 10 years to fully take over players. So in multiplayer, if you drop out even a minor disconnect, the AI used to take over and it would, if you had unused ascension perks, it would use them. If you had um, just, just it, would, it could completely ruin your empire in a matter of seconds after you disconnected. This is a good improvement, uh, absolutely. And then on top of this, if you're only gone for a, let's say you're playing a, you know, a slow role play game and you're gone from playing for a short amount of time, this is going to mean that the AI won't destroy your economy. Because if you're playing on the higher difficulty levels, the AI will have big bonuses and they will rebalance your economy by taking these bonuses into account. So they'll, they'll shift away from having so many basic resource production jobs towards specialist jobs because they, their economy can support it with the big bonuses they get. Now they won't do that immediately, so that's, that's good. And there are some further changes to what happens when the AI takes over from a player, including uh, they're going to just not build armies anymore when they uh, take over. They're going to not uh, build star bases and star base modules so much, and they're going to stop buying and selling pops. Uh, because the AI also got a bonus to the number of star bases it could have. Its star base cap on the higher difficulty levels was increased, so that's good there. And then we've got some scripting changes, some modding changes, which is uh, definitely cool. And then a big host of bug fixes, which I'm not going to go into. And that wraps it up for the patch notes. I hope you enjoy 3.0.3 Stellaris. I think it's time to dive in and play some Stellaris ourselves. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like. If you've got any feedback, please leave a comment. If you'd like to see more content like this, please subscribe. In addition, if you'd like to support this channel, there's a link to Patreon down below in the description.